Welcome to episode two of the sketch series. Today I'm going to be drawing Daredevil. Now I managed to fix the camera issues that I was having just to let you guys know while I do this sketch phase, which if you notice I like to keep it very loose. Um, it's kind of awkward for me to draw at this level because uh, I'm recording this with my phone essentially uh, and it's actually sitting on my coffee mug which you see right there. So what you end up seeing is that I have to kind of shift my hand around and work around uh, everything that I would normally do and the position I would normally draw in. So it makes it a little bit more difficult, but I'm sure I'll either get used to it or find a solution to this in the long run. But anyway, as you can see in the sketch phase, I like to keep it kind of loose. I don't get into nitty details of, oh, here's the muscle texture here and stuff like that. And for this one, I thought I'd do a really quick uh, head sketch. And again, this is my little sketchbook. It's not much bigger than my coffee mug. I think it's a, uh, what is that, 6 inch by 5 and a half inch or something. And I'm going to go in with a simple 0.3 multi-liner pen and just outline everything. It has one pen thickness. It's not like a brush tip that I can adjust the thickness. But I like to go in with a brush pen after and kind of add thick and thin, add thickness to the lines. So giving it that contrast of thick and thin. So what you'll notice is I, again, like to keep this very loose, very quick. And of course, this is sped up, but you can kind of see that I'm not paying too much attention to what is super accurate and super perfect. And again, even though I did sketch it out, I don't stick to my sketch. I use it as a guide. And again, I just threw in a geometry back there. And I'm actually going to, once I erase all the pencil marks, I'm going to go back and fill out that geometry just to have my character pop that little bit more. So you can see I just kind of use one of those, I think it's Stedler uh, erasers, just the standard ones. You can find them anywhere essentially. And here's my Pentel pocket brush and I am having a blast. I'm still learning how to use this thing, but I'm getting a little bit better. You can kind of see me throwing in some more thicks and thins and just kind of adding some thickness and adding some weight to certain parts. I especially like to add weight where cast shadows would be or where... Uh, thick lines would be, for example, where the mask sits on the face or where the eyebrows or the brow uh, furls over the eye sockets and uh, around the outline of the character and some basic uh, like the collarbone muscles, uh, bones and stuff like that. Now I'm shading in the geometry in the background there, which you can see I'm going to give it a thick black finish using the Pentel pocket brush. Um, it's pretty good for this kind of stuff, although this one's kind of broken because I've used it so much in trying to learn it that I kind of bent some of the tips. So I end up getting some fuzzy textures at points. Now, uh, I cut out some pieces where I'd have to let the ink dry, but there are some points where I will stop and walk away and let the ink dry and then come back to it and keep working. Now we're getting into the Copics, so, uh, not the Copics, but the markers, and you can kind of see. Um, for the red, I need some darkness in there, so I'm going to start off with a one of the Prismacolor Premier uh, gray. It's a it's a warm gray. Actually, I think this is a cool gray, and I actually threw it up there. It's a PM uh, marker, and this will be for my uh, cast shadows and my just really dark shadows. Again, I go for a very strong lighting from one side, which has a ambient lighting that curls around the character. If you ever look at something that has a strong lighting on one side, you'll notice that there's a reflected lighting that comes around the other side. So it's almost like it gives it a hard edge to the shadow, which I kind of, I really dig that, especially for uh, uh, leathery and, and, you know, that kind of uh, leathery and latexy texture. Then once the, the gray has dried, I go in with a red marker. And I'm trying to use this one up because it's pretty much dead. This is one of the aqua markers, the Letra set. And, uh, as you can see in the image that I've shown, I have two of them uh, in case this one dies on me, which it did at a certain point. Um, so I switched it out, and you can see here it's the other one. But it's the same tone, so it meshes really well. And eventually, I'm just essentially filling in the gray areas to give it that dark red, and then going back and adding some more red area with the standard without the gray. And then I go in with like a pink marker. And I use it to push some of the red pigment off and kind of give it that reddish pinkish hue. And uh, let that dry for a little bit. And then I'm going to come in and do the last part, which is the skin. So I've thrown up here the ones I'm going to use today for the skin. Um, 
I think they're in order from left to right. So uh, you could see that. And again, I try to be, I'm learning to be more loose with this kind of stuff and not be so meticulous about what I use and how much I use it and how much ink I put down. I like to make the nose and uh, the uh, top part of the chin a little bit more reddish to give it more of that live tone. And you can kind of see that I go back with a little bit of the skin tone and just lightly touch the side where the reflected light is just to give it that contrast a little bit more. So as you can see here this is the final version and uh, it turned out okay. It's uh, The proportions are alright. Um, even though he doesn't have eyes I like to keep the eye sockets in the right place. So I draw him as though he was a standard character and then I just change it up. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll have another one shortly. So thank you for watching and thank you for sharing. See you next time.